Hi everyone, Jeff here to talk a little bit of Minecraft and to help you get acclimated to the game. So begin, let's kind of take a big look at Minecraft and just see what it is. And really, it's, it's fair to call Minecraft a phenomenon. 18 million people have bought the game. That's only the desktop version. It doesn't include the phone or tablet version. Uh, that's like 21,000 people an hour, or sorry, every 24 hours that have purchased the game. And what's really kind of critical about Minecraft is that 74 million videos on YouTube are about Minecraft. There are Minecraft uh, blogs, wikis, podcasts, YouTube videos. So when we talk about using games in the classroom, it's not just the game that's critical, but the community around games and that language use that uh, exists there that we can really tap into as teachers. Now, Minecraft just isn't huge in terms of facts and figures, but the game itself is massive. It's a procedurally generated game, which means each time you start a new world, it'll create that world from scratch out to an area of about 30 billion blocks. So the game um, itself is, is really massive. And basically, uh, to, to start playing Minecraft, it's really easy. All you got to do is go to Minecraft.net, and you can download the game. What you have to purchase is a account registration. So what that means is, if you have three computers, you can install Minecraft on all three. And it, as long as you have a purchase login, you can log in to any computer that has Minecraft and play your game. So uh, one thing to keep in mind, like I have Minecraft on my computer at work, my computer's at home, and I can log into any of them because I have that one account. When you begin the game, you'll get to choose uh, your character, and so basically you have Steve or Alex, the two characters you can choose from, but you can modify those skins to give yourself a, you know, a particular look that you'd like inside the game. Now, what is Minecraft? Basically, Minecraft is digital Legos, and um, Contrary to, the, to what we say, we'll often refer to Minecraft as a game. Minecraft actually isn't a game. It's a toy. Uh, much like a rubber ball, there are no rules around it. I can throw a rubber ball, bounce a rubber ball, roll a rubber ball. There's, there's nothing that tells me what I need to do with that rubber ball. Minecraft is the same way. When you get inside the game, don't look for goals or um, rules or things that you have to do inside the game. It's basically just an enormous play space. And the way it works is during the day, you can sort of mine blocks and create things. And at night, um, you know, monsters come out and you'll have to fight them. And uh, you can really kind of do almost anything. But really, you mine and you craft and then you build. Now, there are two basal, uh, basic types of the game. There's the creative mode. And in creative mode, all the resources are, resources are infinite. And we'll be using the creative mode when we first start playing the game. Now, what does that mean? It means you can build anything. For instance, people have built ancient Roman cities. Uh, one of the first real surprises was uh, when someone came out in the Minecraft community and built a one-to-one -one scale model of the Star Trek Enterprise. Um, that really kind of opened people's eyes to the true potential of this game. Other things you can do, uh, there was a 16-year-old kid who built a working algorithmic logic unit, essentially a computer chip using just parts from the game. Um, so it really is wide open as to what you can and your students can do inside the game. Now the other version of the game is survival mode. With survival mode, you essentially have to um, you know, fight monsters and you have health and there are things you have to kind of do inside the game to basically just survive. A lot of that comes down to mobs. Now mobs are kind of the term for the non-playable characters in the game, and there are two types. Your passive mobs are friendly. You have livestock, for instance, that you can gather, um, you can get food from, you can breed. What's interesting is, for instance, like the sheep, there are a lot of different colors of sheep, and if you start breeding them together, they'll show uh, Mendeleev genetics and dominant and um, uh, passive traits inside their genetics. So you can really kind of find these interesting little learning opportunities if you look for it and places to kind of explore. Uh, villagers are characters in the game that you can interact with, you can trade, and they have villages that you can visit. 
However, there are also hostile mobs. So when we play survival mode, the hostile mobs will attack you at night. And uh, for instance, the skeleton will shoot arrows so he can attack you from a distance. But the one everyone dreads and your kids will most likely talk about is the creeper. Uh, the creepers, if they get too close to you, they'll start with a sss and they'll explode, damaging you and any building nearby. So be careful of the creepers. Now, to kind of give you a sense of the Minecraft world and what you can craft, the game starts out very simply where you can gather wood and build. However, it almost um, exponentially increases as to what you can craft. So when you put these items together, you can build more and more objects that can help you build more and more complex items. So basically, the, it all comes down though to your first night. A lot of Minecraft players will talk about the first night that they play the game. And really what you want to do is build yourself a, a little shelter out of uh, dirt and get inside before the monsters come out. And typically, here's how you can get started with the game. First thing you want to do is like punch a tree because you have no items at the beginning. So you punch a tree and you can get wood from it. Use that wood to make planks. Then if you take two planks and craft them together, you can make sticks. If you take three planks and two sticks, you can make a, a wooden pickaxe. And that'll help you uh, dig dirt and stone a little bit faster. And then you can use that stone to build a stone pickaxe, which will help you um, dig even faster. And it'll go longer before it breaks. Then once you can get underground, you can start collecting things like iron, gold, diamonds, and uh, really building much more complex things. Now, um, there's two types of, of versions of Minecraft that you can play, the single player and the multiplayer. The multiplayer takes place on a server. Now, servers are fairly easy to set up and run, and you typically have um, a few different types that cater to a certain gameplay style, like player versus player, or survival map, or creative. And we'll talk more about servers later in the course. But really, it kind of comes down to um, a few different types. Now, for the classroom, PvP is probably not something you'll be using a lot, although your students may ask for, is to turn on PvP. Now, PvP means player versus player, and it allows your uh, students to fight. So. That may be something if students ask for you want to think about before you turn it on. Um, another version that you see often is creative. Now the creative servers have just massive group builds and a great example of this is a group online MC Westeros has decided to rebuild um, George R. R. Martin's A Song of Fire and Ice or A Game of Thrones inside of Minecraft. Now when I say uh, to build it, they're building it to scale. And what's interesting is if you want to help build this, you have to submit a resume. You've got to show them that you have the skills that they're looking for. And if so, they'll accept you into their group to build. Now you can always go in as a tourist and look around their world, but only those selected can help them build it. Um, other things you'll see are servers that take place in a particular world or environment. The Hunger Games have been very popular um, over the last few years with, with the movies and the books. Um, other things you'll see are Harry Potter worlds, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, servers based on particular anime or TV shows, um, even books that students want to replicate. I've even seen the Bronte sisters, uh, Weathering Heights, built inside of Minecraft. So it's not just kind of the pop culture stuff. Now, one thing you'll hear is uh, vanilla Minecraft and modded Minecraft. Now, when you just play Minecraft, it's often referred to as vanilla, but you can flavor it, if you will, with mods. And mods let you really kind of alter the game content and really focus it in on what you want it to do. Um, a great example of this is uh, the Feed the Beast series of mods that you can put together to kind of almost turn Minecraft into a game. You can give goals and objectives and have puzzle rooms and challenges that your players have to complete. Um, other versions are, are Technet. Now, uh, Techit and the Bucket servers 
basically allow you to create a mass industrialization inside of Minecraft. So great for an engineering with specific purposes kind of course where you want to build massive machines and projects. And uh, another one that you'll hear a lot about from teachers is Minecraft EDU. This was created by Joel Levin and it's one of the few mods you have to pay for. Um, it's an added service to Minecraft but what it does is it gives teachers a lot of extra commands. For instance, you can assign homework right inside the game. You can set boundaries. You can post information. So it gives the teacher a lot of extra controls that aren't typically in the game. Now, that's Minecraft as a whole, but if we really kind of wanted to zoom in um, and look at kind of things for the classroom, there are a lot of great maps for the classroom. Now, maps are... Um, worlds that have been built and altered and changed that you can download and run either as single player and multiplayer. And we'll dis discuss that a little farther in the course. Right now we're just getting oriented. Uh, a great example is uh, Minecraft Great Britain. Now what uh, the Royal Ordnance Society of Great Britain did is put all of uh, England inside of Minecraft. You may have heard of uh, few months back, maybe about six months back or so, Denmark put its entire country into Minecraft. So you can actually get on a server and visit Denmark in Minecraft. Um, this, this Great Britain one is huge. Some of these maps can be very big. A really kind of a interesting map is Oakland in Minecraft. Now the Museum of Art and Digital Entertainment asked the users of the website Reddit to build Oakland. Now what was interesting was they recreated Oakland having never been there, but they used um, Google Maps and other online sources to get imagery of Oakland and build from there. So they basically created a city they've never seen. Um, this is a great way to kind of look at project-based learning or task-based learning with your students is to give them a task to do inside of Minecraft. Um, another one, for instance, is uh, the Taurus that I really enjoy. This is uh, Montemar district of Paris and it's faithfully recreated the entire neighborhood and you can just walk around this neighborhood and really kind of get an immersive experience of, of this area of, of Paris. Now one that's really fascinating is Eric Walker's World of Humanities and this is huge so he's created um, large sections of the ancient world so he has everything from um, ancient China to Rome, Egypt and your, your players, your students can go into this world and basically uh, take quests so they can help Alexander the Great uh, achieve such and such and they can talk to you know Cleopatra and, and help her rule her, her Egyptian kingdom. And it's um, a really kind of a great place for Eric's students and then students as a whole to kind of practice history, social science, cultures, geography, and to give a little bit of context to what they're doing inside the game. Once again, uh, this is a massive, massive map and really well done as to what's possible as a teacher to do, to do inside of Minecraft. So uh, as far as that goes, that's a real basic introduction to Minecraft. It kind of just hits the basics. And over the next five weeks, I'll be here to answer questions and to help out. We've got uh, Philip and Vance and Mariana as well. And uh, to get going... You know, download Minecraft, uh, get yourself an account, and then when you're ready, you can always log into our server and play with us. So thanks, and uh, let's play.